Welcome to uh, another Cornerstone Church podcast. We are making our way through the Pilgrim's Progress. This is a new series that we started uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we've been following Christian on his on his journey, and we're we're going to um, we're going to carry on with that today. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm here with Pete, Hello. with Ben, Hi. and with Rory, Hello. and I'm Tom, and uh, uh, we are we we're workers, pastors at the church, and um, this is just one of a. Uh, a number of podcasts that we've done uh, over the years, which you can uh, which you can find on podcast channels and on our on our website. Um, so we left last time um, with Christian and Pliable both coming out of the slough of despond. It's that picture of um, uh, anxieties, depressions in the Christian life, feelings of conviction of sin, perhaps. And Pliable has decided that this Christian stuff is not for him, and he's gone back to the city of destruction. Whereas, thanks to the ministry of a man called Help, uh, Christian has found his way out of the Slav to Spond and is back on the road. And so we pick up the story um, here. So this is Christian walking solitarily uh, by himself. He espied one far off crossing over the field to meet him. And their hap was to meet. (laughs) It means they happened to meet. uh, By chance they met um, just as they were crossing the way of each other. And the gentleman's name that met him was Mr. Worldly Wise Man, who dwelt in the town of Carnal Policy, um, (laughs) a very great town. So this is the next um, major character that Christian meets on the journey. His name is Worldly Wise Man. And what do we well, learn it's a, it's about the him? It's the next challenge, isn't it, to Christianity in a sense? Mm. Yeah. So you've had the sort of doubts and despair and, you know, uh, and feeling of unworthiness and that sort of stuff. Um, and now you've got this next challenge of, of a man that is basically going to say, I know we'll go into it a bit more, um, you know, if you can clean up your act, mm. uh, you don't you don't need Christ. You don't need to go the way of of uh, sacrifice and the following of the Lord in that in that way, it, it'll be hard to get up to the town of carnal policy. But you know, in the end, it's a lot easier than the Christian life of the cross. Take up your cross and follow me. You don't need to do that, really. And he says, "You thought the slough despond was hard. It's yep. about to get much harder." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so and what? I mean, you've touched on it there, Pete. So uh, I don't know if anyone's got any. Uh, quotes in front of them what what is what essentially is he trying to say so you've talked about cleaning up your act you've talked about there Ben uh, threatening him with future dangers Uh, it may be unwise to continue on this course you know Uh, but let's kind of drill down into uh, the unique message of worldly wise man who who would who wants to have a stab at that I mean he's he's told to walk up to a village called morality isn't he where he'll find a judicious man called legality and if legality's not in well he's got a son called civility and so i think there's clues there that this is about um just living a sort of moral uh law abiding life and that in itself will will kind of get you get get rid of your burden mm. And it arises from a, a fake compassion for Christian, doesn't it? So he sees Christian struggling under the weight of this burden and is asking him, you know, how did he, how did he get into such a condition uh, where he's so weighed down and looking so fed up? And he's wanting to say, you know, you know, look, look, come on, I see you're sighing and you're groaning, and this is difficult for you. And uh, what, you know, what, what are you doing here? Don't you know that if you were to just come off this road for a bit, um, I can really recommend some medicine for you. You know, there there is a way that you can quite quickly be shot of that, um, and your back can be less bent and more upright again, and you can have that smile return to your face. And so it, it sounds like this is. A bit like evangelist in one sense, he, like he's for him. You know, he, he wants him to lose his burden. Um, evangelist wants him to lose his burden as well, and, and he does. And um, but um, he even says things like, "Oh, who sent you this way, evangelist? Oh, him, that guy. He's often yeah. leading people astray." <laughs> um, yeah, and sort of saying, "Oh, poor you. You've you basically been mistold. You've been lied to here, and you're in real trouble." Uh, uh, He's disgusted by the fact that he's reading the Bible. He's, that is an absolutely disgraceful thing to do. That's leading you down the wrong path, yeah. brother. Where, yeah, where, where, who told you you had this yeah. burden, yeah. this book? Oh. 
And I mean, you get this everywhere today, particularly. I mean, don't you? Really, you know, the whole idea of if we educate people in the right way, uh, they're going to be, you know, I mean, the, the sex education, I mean, just take sex education. We've been banging on about that since the 60s. If we just educate people, it'll be all right. And it's like worse than ever, at least in my life. Everybody's, you know, failing in, 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 that, in that area. But if only we educate people, we've got to tell them more things, educate them, and, and that's a worldly wisdom, isn't it? Uh, and, and of course, education is a good thing. So no one's against it. That's the problem with these things. There's, there's, there's good in education, yeah. but that isn't going to take away your sin. It's not going to change the human heart, and that's that's the issue here. It's interesting as well, isn't it? Because it it sounds like good advice. Yeah. It sounds it sounds and it sounds attainable. Mm-hmm. So like he he's pointed to this hill. And like, oh, it's just that hill over there. Yeah. It's nice and easy. But then Christian gets to that hill and it's suddenly it's a, just a huge mountain that he can't can't deal with. And and I think again he's probably faced with his with his burden even more so. Yes. And some people will climb that mountain because they haven't got a burden. I mean the reason why so sorry, we're jumping ahead, aren't we, a little bit. We haven't sorry. got to the mountain yet. But um I mean basically worldly wise man points him to the mountain Sinai. And he's got to climb up there and meet up Mr. Legality in the town of morality. And you'll be a moral being and you'll, you know, he'll help you with the sin off just by being a moral person. That's the whole sort of flavour. I mean, in, in a sense, there's religion here, but in a sense, it's also not religion. Um, because I mean, the religion bit is that si- it's climbing Sinai, the sort of Ten Commandments and stuff. Um, but in a sense, there's a worldly version of that religion, isn't it? I mean, in one sense, even good people, uh, which we would like, uh, like Jordan Peterson, there's a stoicism here, isn't there? There's a uh, pull yourself together, go for it, and you'll be a good person, and you'll feel happier yourself. And that's not the. And there's good stuff in that, isn't there? That is more helpful than just lazing around doing nothing. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't deal with sin. That's the issue, isn't it? It's only ever it's it, carnal policy is the town that worldly wise man's from, isn't it? Carnal being like flesh, yeah, like carne, the Spanish word, and policy being like things you outwardly do. So it's only outward flesh policy. Yeah. So it doesn't ever deal with the inward state of mm. mankind. And that's the unique thing about the Christian message, because m- most other world religions would would acknowledge that there is something very wrong with humans, um, that we have a sin problem, we're not naturally right with God. Um, but just one place where we see um, Christianity's uniqueness is in the solution to that problem, because most other world religions, if not all of them, um, in some way or another boil down to you being the solution, at least in partnership with God. It's, it's you and God together who are going to solve the issue of your sin uh, through a reformed life. You know, So if you can reform yourself outwardly, God will accept you. Um, whereas Christianity acknowledges that our problem is more serious than we ever imagined, but that in order to be truly Christian, we have to accept God's remedy um, and allow uh, his graciousness through Christ to take the burden away. But that doesn't appeal to us. And I think this is why the carnal policy of the flesh thing is helpful here, because um, we naturally like the remedy which is going to exalt me and glorify me, because that appeals to me, because I can say, I've done it, look how I've turned my life around. Whereas in order to accept the Christian solution, I've got to just say, you know, it was all of free grace. It was nothing. All that I could bring in my hands was my sin. And I had to accept Christ. He's the solution, you know. Um, And that, in the end, makes you more human than you could ever have dreamed of. But it's humbling. And, And we prefer solutions which will shine the spotlight on me a little bit um, and he, he knows that that's why he's appealing to Christian along these lines because he knows that's lurking in every human heart you see so but that, that is the heart of every human being mm. isn't it that they want to justify themselves mm. so n- no one in this world acts because they think it's wrong necessarily they're all doing what is right in their own eyes aren't they and so they're trying to do things that that they consider is right and that's worldly wisdom is you you decide what's right and you do with 
we you do with your body with what whatever you want to do because that's what's right for you and uh, that's totally wrong <laughs> okay so he he's walking alone sees this brother they hap to meet um and um uh worldly wise man s- starts speaking to him why have you got this burden on and all that sort of stuff there's just some good little lines here um uh, before the big conversation it's a worldly wise man says wilt wilt thou hearken unto me if i give thee counsel so you know you're gonna listen to me if i give you counsel but the reply is just brilliant isn't it from christian if it be good i will <laughs> for i stand in need of good counsel and there's a broad beautiful humility there isn't there uh, if you can give me good counsel, well, I'm going to take it because I'm in, in, in need of good counsel. Yeah, um, it's, just, it's great, yeah, because yeah. he's saying, you know, are you going to hear me? In principle, yes, but it depends on the quality of what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then it's Worldly Wise Man sort of problem, wants to have a go at the burden and where he's from and he's heard about him and and then he has a go at evangelist. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't like this idea. And, of course, evangelist means good news. Um, an evangelist is pointing to the place where where grace is, isn't he? He's pointing yeah. to grace, where the cross, where where the because of the cross, the burden will be dealt with. Your sin will be forgiven, and so it's all of grace, all of grace. And worldly wise man does not like grace, and that's true, isn't it? So re- worldly religions, worldly wise man, grace is such a an annoying, ugly thing. It's not fair, grace, is it? Because the great thing about worldly wise man and decency and morality is that, you know, you get your just desserts, as it were. You've you've pulled yourself together. Good on you. Uh, you deserve it. Whereas grace is, you don't deserve anything. You've got this sin on your back. The sin's taking you to hell and the wrath of God. And it's only the kindness and undeserved kindness of God that will take that away. So worldly motives is very, very opposed to grace. And you get this with with religions. I mean, if you talk to Islam, it's, it's, all, you know, it's very similar, isn't it? You've got to go to a place on pilgrimage. You've got to uh, uh, do this fasting. Uh, you've got to, you know, there's the five pillars of Islam that you have to do. And if you talk about grace, it's, it's, it sometimes produces violent uh, eruptions of, oh, your God just lets people off and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's it? right. And, and the assumption is that um, if, if you are saved by grace alone, how will that ever reform a person? Yeah. You know, their argument is, well, why don't you just do what you like then? In other words, they think that an expression of... Uh, unbelievable kindness would just lead you to want to offend that person even more you know oh well it doesn't matter what I do then but which is to just make God a totally um, unrelational being you know oh he's saved all by grace I'll do what I want he doesn't care you know um, but of course that's not not the way grace grace works um, and, and it's interesting how in this story as well that when Christian leaves the road and he goes to this hill which as we've said is a picture of Sinai um, thinking that um, moral living will help him it only makes things worse for him because the more he tries to lift his burden by being a good person the more aware he is of how he just can't do it um, and so it's quite a powerful isn't it you know he uh, he gets there and um, he's worried that the hill is going to fall on his head and uh, he didn't know what to do and then here it is also his burden now seemed heavier to him than while he was in his way, which is not what worldly wise man promised. He actually promised the opposite, that if you go there and you learn the commandments and you obey them, it will be lighter. Well, it's become heavier. Um, and uh, there came also flashes of fire. So this is the Mount Sinai out of the hill that made Christian afraid he should be burnt. Hence, therefore, he did not he, he did sweat and quake for fear. So um, now, you know, he realizes uh, the, 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 the nature of worldly wise man's counsel um, that this is never going to work. In fact, it's only going to make his burden worse and heavier. Yeah, um, of course it's going to get heavier because he's trying to follow a law and a, and a way of life that he can't succeed in because when he fails, that adds to the burden and he will inevitably fail. He's trying to, he's trying to follow a law, but the law just reveals to you how much yeah. sinful you are. That's the point of the law, isn't it? It affords uh, the sin. The letter to the Galatians is so good on that, isn't it? When Paul's writing to that church, and he's saying, if there was a law that led to life, then Christ would be, you know, useless. We wouldn't need him. 
um and you know and why have you gone back to it? it it almost is isn't it the galatian church this little detour that he's taking he started off with the gospel of grace and then he's been sort of turned to back towards law and morality and outward things carnal policies um but there is no law that leads to life is what paul reveals to us isn't it in um in those letters and that's what pilgrim's finding because he's going to do one of two things it's either going to make him proud that he's better than some people that he's succeeded yeah. and then he th- that, that will that's terrible because it will he'll think he's okay mm-hmm. or it gives him you know abject despair where he's like oh, i've completely failed so this burden is going to be heavier and and the, the yeah absolutely the laws expose your heart don't they you know sometimes you don't even know you're a lawbreaker until you see a law that says don't walk on the grass and you suddenly think well oh dear, who says um and you want to walk on the grass it's uh, you know that's what the law does doesn't it 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 exposes the rebellion in you or you don't uh, do it and then feel very proud of yourself because yes. you've obeyed the laws well, you've been a good boy yeah, yeah so there's, there's pride <laughs> there isn't it and then, I mean, so he, here he is at the foot of Mount Sinai, um, or this hill, um, in a worse position than he was before. Um, and then how, how's this for the free grace of God? You know, and, and now he began to be sorry that he had taken Mr. Worldly Wise Man's counsel, and with that he saw evangelists coming. You know? I mean, that's God's graciousness, isn't it? You know, he's gone uh, so wrong so quickly, um, but the Lord in his kindness has seen what's happened and uh, is just like with help, He's got somebody on hand to come and to come and restore him. He comes only at that point, but not at the point that he's about to go up. Sometimes the Lord lets you off on a leash, doesn't he? A little bit, just so you can see there's no life in something. And then as you come back, yeah, he's ready to receive you again. What I like about when I mean, we see this, uh, but uh, the help an evangelist and all all of the helps, they don't just come. Uh, in some kind of um, nice, uh, just smiley help way, they always come with a rebuke, don't they? <laughs> and and that is the help, isn't it? Because they, they want you to repent uh, deeply of of where where you've got. It's not just oh there there you've ended up here. It's uh, what dost thou uh, what dost thou hear, Christian? Yeah. In other words, why are you here? What are you here for? I didn't tell you to come this way. And he really lays into him, doesn't he? Yeah, and, um, you know, he asks him a question he knows the answer to. Uh, if Andrew says, did I not direct thee thy way to the little wicket gate? Uh, I mean, he knows the answer to that. Yes, he did. <laughs> and Christian says, yes, dear sir. But again, it's what you're saying. He's wanting to draw out a confession in him, isn't he? He's wanting him to see his sin. Not only has he listened to worldly wise man, that was foolish, but he now stands in direct disobedience of a command that he was given, you know, um, and he needs to face up to that before grace is going to be as precious as it should be to him. Um, It's it's, it's a good, um, it's a good reminder for us as Christians. So, so Christian says to Mr. Worldly wise man, I will listen to you if you give me good counsel. And as Mr. Worldly wise man is giving him this counsel, it is in direct contradiction to what he has heard. Isn't it in, in the gos- in the gospels and in um in the letters uh, in the epistles, Paul is so often saying, "What did I teach you when I was with you? What was the gospel that was handed down to you? Why have you departed from it?" Yeah, yeah. So it's imp- you know we we have been given counsel, um, and we must not depart from it. Yeah, and I mean he didn't go, did he? The, 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 so what he should have done with worldly wise man is is to say, "Yes, I need good counsel," as long as it it. It's uh, is in line with the book in my hand, yeah. and he didn't, didn't do that. No, yeah, in fact, he dis- dismissed the book, didn't he? Yeah. Worldly yeah. wise man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, and so um, and so that, that and then, then this conversation goes on, and uh, you know, evangelist is not, as you say, happy with a superficial cure. He wants to work out what's happened here, and uh, he's saying, "Look, you know, worldly wise man, he bid me with speed to get rid of my burden," um, and this is partly the nature of false teaching isn't it that it never it will never say that ideas like sin and the bible are stupid um it, it will always distort those things so um you know he does want to help christian with his burden you know he does uh think it's maybe important to feel that we're not good people um so he might use christiany language even and we think oh that well that sounds a little bit like what i what i know you know um 
And so a false teacher will never stand up and say any talk of sin is just nonsense or that Bible is can't ever be trusted, don't open it. It's always warping, isn't it? And uh, and Evangelist is trying to help him to, to learn discernment here, really. Um, and, and that's his answer, isn't it? Just stand here. Just stand here, Christian, and I'm going to show you the words of God. Uh, so you, you've listened to worldly wise men without testing it um, to God's word. Now I'll show you God's word and hear the warnings, Christian. He, he goes on the warnings, yeah. though. So, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? He doesn't... I mean, we can be just too quick sometimes with healing balm, can't we? Uh, he's going to give the healing balm, so he's definitely about Christian's good. He's not trying to do him harm, but he wants, you know, he wants him to know, look, you are bleeding here, and actually you are in great danger, and he quotes scripture, scripture, scripture to him uh, all over the place, you know. You haven't listened. You didn't listen. You're in more danger than you sort of were. Um, and he, he allows that. That was a bit like a sort of, you know, like a kid that's that's seriously, you know, hurt themselves by not listening to their parents. The parent is going to bring the healing balm or the Band-Aid or, you know, heal the wound. But it's going to say, you didn't listen. You got into this situation because you didn't listen. Now, you've got to listen to me because this is serious. And that that's good teaching, isn't it? Isn't that good Bible teaching? It's not just sort of, oh, it's okay, we've all done this, you know. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's, it's so important, and that's why the Bible does both, doesn't it? It does give us the assurances and the, the remedy, but we must feel the weight of our predicament. Mm -hmm. And so if we, if we don't understand the course that we're taking and where that might take us, then then there's then we're not going to really appreciate the remedy as much as, as we can. It's, it's, we must feel the weight of our sin. And he says, in fact, you are teetering at the point of being in danger of eternal punishment and damnation. But he needs to feel that. Like, look at what, look at what, the consequences are of those actions. If you follow those actions, know what, what, what will happen. Yeah, and, and there's he, another one here that, that thou art the man that art running into this yeah. misery. Thou hast begun to reject the counsel of the Most High and to draw back thy foot from the way of peace, even almost to the hazarding uh, of thy perdition. In mm. other words, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. Then you, you, you fool. You mm. know. It's, but he, but the good thing is that Christian feels feels it. Yeah. And he says, "Oh, I'm ruined." Yeah. But the, the difference between this and worldly wise men is yeah. there is no no remedy for no. for Christian and worldly wise men. No. You failed. The law is you've broken the law. You are damned. Whereas evangelist comes in with a with and a worldly remedy. wise man isn't there under the cliff saying, "Oh, let me help you with the no. burden or anything." No, There's no. no help. Is He's there? preparing the next one yeah. Yeah. to come. Yeah. And then, but I love. But we were just saying so. So he, he brings the sort of judgment of God upon him, evangelist here. And then, then it says, then Christian fell down at his foot as dead, crying, woe is me, for I am undone. And then at the sight of which evangelist caught him by the right hand, saying, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Um, and it's just fantastic, isn't it? Um yeah, it is. Yeah, and um, and so then evangelist. I mean, you turn the page and you think, oh, when's that conversation ending? But it doesn't. You know, evangelist <laughs> carries on. Um, you know, yeah, there are these three points, and it's a wonderful summary, isn't it, of the dangers of wise man's counsel. These are the three things in this man's counsel that thou must utterly abhor. Um, you know, so there's something, isn't it? You know, this is not just a different way of seeing things uh, or you know, we're all in the boat together, we're just rowing with different oars sort of thing. You know, it's you must utterly abhor it. Uh, firstly, his turning thee out of the way. You should hate any one who tries to do that to you. His labouring to render the cross odious to thee, uh, which is just fantastic. I mean, we'll come back to that perhaps. But, and his setting thy feet in that way that leadeth unto the administration of death. <laughs> um so, and that second one is huge, isn't it? I think laboring to render the cross odious to thee. Um, in other words, he's already heard that the solution to his burden 
is going to be through the wicket gate. You know, he may not know exactly what's there yet uh, in the story, but for our purposes, you know, um, through that wicket gate is the cross. That's the place where his burden will fall off his back and roll into the tomb forever. And worldly wise man wants that solution to be a stink in his nostrils, you know, because why should I have to deal with it that way when I could, you know, um, do my best to get rid of it and I could become like worldly wise man. I mean, look at him, you know. Uh, and so any doctrine which um, takes away from the cross, which lessens the beauty of the cross, um, we are to um, utterly abhor. Um, and the way Mr. Worldly Wise Man did that was by partly by making the way of the cross seem too costly. So he yeah. was saying, why have you got that mud on your face? Oh, you've been in the slough of despond. Why, you know, that was the easiest thing you've got ahead of you. Yes. There are much worse dangers coming. And then he talked about his family as well. He said, don't you have a wife and children? And Christian says, yes, I do. He says, well, where, why, you, why did you leave them? And he says, because uh, the burden on my back gave me no pleasure in them anymore. I was so burdened that I couldn't enjoy them. And then Mr. Worldly Wise Man says, oh, well, you know, you don't have to give them up. If you go up the mountain, they can dwell with you. You can call for them. And they, so it's constantly um, saying, look at the cost of the cross. You don't want that. Much easier. You can have everything you want and salvation in this life by, by following these laws and things. And that's the, that's the temptation that we have, isn't it, in this world is have your cake and eat it. <laughs> It's it's, it's um it is a satanic voice, isn't it? Worldly wise man, and that makes sense. Obviously, he's the ruler of this this age. But you 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 take the first sinful act in the Bible of Adam and Eve, and the 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 wise what the wise serpent um, deceives and says, "Did God really say?" And he starts to distort the word, and he says, "That's not the right way. That's not true." That's not and the you'll way be to be saved. And you will be wise in your own eyes yeah. if you um, yeah. eat this, yeah. And so, and ever since, ever since then, he's been deceiving. And so, Satan uses people to deceive us to say, no, the way of grace is not the way to be saved. You should do it yourself. And so, of course, worldly wise men says that because because he is off the devil, really. He does that. Satan does that with Jesus as well, doesn't he? When he's tempting him, he he shows him the sort of the fulfillment of the cross, but without the cross. So it's, you know, make bread and you don't have to be the bread of life. You know, come follow me and I'll give you the whole world. And you, and you can you can, you can can bypass the suffering of the cross. Um, mm. You know, why are you going towards the cross, Jesus? Mm. Uh, so it's, it's just the same tactic, isn't yeah. it? It is, yeah. And it, it carries on being rubbed in. So he, he then uh, goes on to elaborate on those three problems. And then it says, after he's finished that preach, it says, now Christian looked for nothing but death and began to cry out lamentably. And then later it says, he was greatly ashamed to think that this gentleman's arguments flowing only from the flesh should have had um, prevalency over him so far as to cause him to forsake. And, you know, I think... You know, brothers, who you know, which Christian hasn't uh, felt the pain of that moment, uh, where where the where the beauty of the cross and what Christ has done for us um, has not ruled over our hearts in the way that it should have done, and the arguments from the flesh have won out in our own minds, and we've gone the wrong way, we've done wrong things, and really, we we've listened, we've listened to the arguments of the flesh. Yeah. Um, and it's a painful place to be, isn't it, as a Christian, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah. Bunyan's just so good with this yeah. bit because I think he, he really describes what it's like to mess up <laughs> and that feeling after you've messed up and you've decided to abandon the way of the gospel and abandon the goodness of God's word and you've decided to do what's right in your own eyes and it's just like, you idiot. <laughs> That's what it feels like, doesn't it? Like, pit, Christian's like... He, he he cursed the time he met with worldly wise. He called himself a fool a thousand times over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shame filled him to think this gentleman's argument were nothing more than fleshly advice and yet caused him to forsake the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you absolute numpty, you've done it know, again, you yeah. wally. Yeah. And you, 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 we feel that. Yeah, and um, even that feeling is an expression of God's grace to us because 
you know, the the worst place would be to have a conscience seared by sin so that you no longer feel anything like that at all. Um, and so that is the, that's the seed of life there, isn't it? That, that thought. Um, but so he's brought low again and feels, can he be forgiven? But an evangelist is so superb, isn't he? So uh, he says, thy sin is very great. So he doesn't immediately <laughs> go to forgiveness again. Thy sin is very great. Uh, for by it thou, thou hast committed two evils. And then it just reminds him yet again, thou hast forsaken the way that is good uh, to tr- tread forbidden paths, uh, yet uh, will the man at the gate receive thee, and his name is goodwill. So you will be received because of goodwill, because of grace. Yeah, and I think the the thing there is, is just how different... So worldly wise man is, has has somehow cleverly made God into a worldly wise man because this is the exact opposite. Thou hast forsaken the way that is good and yet worldly wise man is telling you to go to decency, morality and everything. And that's... So worldly wise man is so clever today that he thinks he's made God to be a worldly wise man, which is God says you need to climb the mountain. God says you need to go to morality. Isn't it? So that's how clever worldly wise man is. Um, but he won't, you know, he, he, he says you have sinned because you've not really listened to the God of grace. So if you don't listen to the God of the Bible, you listen to another God, you're going you're gonna to be pointed to morality. So this is the uniqueness of Christianity again, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. So are we going, are we finishing there or are we... Probably. Yeah, well, that's the end of that, that chapter. So, uh, you know, Evangelist tells him, you know, there is a man at the gate called Goodwill. And uh, thankfully for all of us, he uh, is compassionate towards men and uh, wants to save. So don't turn aside and, and keep going. Um, you know, last words, lest you perish from the way uh, when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Um, and so these are, I mean, they. Are, it's funny, isn't it, Evangelist? He is... Um, you know that's that's his big thing, isn't it? He wants to lay the weight of sin upon him, that he might uh, that he might keep going towards the cross. Um, because he wants the weight of sin taken off. Yeah, go and exactly. Knock, go and knock, and the door will be opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, thanks for uh, thanks for listening in, and uh, do join us again next time when we're going to be uh, going to be going to the wicket gate and seeing Christian's arrival at that uh, place he was pointed to. Um, and do do let us know if you've got any feedback about these podcasts. If you want to drop us a drop us a line through the through the email um, address on the website and let us know you're listening or if it's blessed you or helped you or if you've shared it with anyone or then uh, we'd love to know about that or any questions that you've got about it um, then, then do send them in and as I said at the start uh, there's there's all kinds of other resources you can uh, you can tune into on on the website. Mm-hmm.